All right, y'all, I'm super pumped about today's video. Today, we're going to be asking the question, my vacuum keeps tripping the breaker. Oh, and this can be so frustrating. Today, we're going to talk about some of the common reasons and common ways that your vacuum could be tripping the breaker. So first off, you may just have the circuit overloaded, whether you're on a 15 or a 20 amp circuit, respectively. That circuit can only handle so many amps. And one thing you may not you know, think about is that just because you plugged in the hallway doesn't mean that that circuit's not maybe also running the bedroom, another bedroom, the living room, or somewhere else in the home. You may have one outlet in your home that looks like this you know, funny picture here, but it may also be running your hallway where you plugged your vacuum in. So let's go ahead and break this down. All right, let's say we're upstairs here. We're wanting to get ready to vacuum this room. We broke out the Dyson. We're ready to roll and we're ready to do it. Let's assume that we're on a 15 amp circuit. So we're on a 15 amp circuit. Everything's good. We're rocking and rolling. And I'm just going to make these numbers up. It could be any variation. And you know what it takes to trip your circuit breaker may be different than another, depending on how many amps that you have on it and what brand it is and what type it is and whether you know you could be on a fuse, you could be on a breaker, but let's go ahead and break it down. All right, so let's imagine that we have 2.5 amps of lighting, we have three amps of other loads, and we also, now we plug in our 13 amp vacuum. Just simple math, 2.5 plus 3 plus 13, we're pulling 18.5 amps. Now, depending on whether it's a fuse, whether it's a circuit breaker, this is likely going to run for a few minutes, maybe indefinitely at 18.5 amps. But what happens if we get to 19 and 20 and 21 amps? You know, if you plug something else in, this can very easily become overloaded and trip the circuit breaker. Every brand's going to be a little bit different in the response. And if you have fuses, it's also going to throw, you know, a different thing into it. But this could simply just be an overload. Maybe you're tripping the breaker because there's too many amps on the circuit. Now let's go ahead and look at the second way here. So the second way, and this is a picture of a motor of a central vac system, but you can fill in the blank with your motor from you know, your vacuum. He here we have our motor. So we have all of these parts. We have the commutator, we have the motor brush, we have the armature, the field, the rotating, the shell. We have all of these moving working parts. And what happens is, is over time is they start to break down. So we can have a dead short of one of the windings. We could have um, you know, any of the electrical coming in or out. It could uh, you know, become you know, wore down, tear down over time. The insulation could be, you know, nicked or cut. And when you're plugging it in and you're running the vacuum, it may trip the breaker right away. And that would let you know that you have a dead short somewhere inside of this or inside of the cord, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Something's touching either hot is touching neutral or hot is touching ground or some variation thereof. Or let's say the vacuum runs for four or five minutes. And what's happening is this motor is getting hot and it's starting to short out. It's starting to fail over time. So that's another common way. Another really common way is going to be the cord. All right, so if we look at our cord here, and if we look right here, this one's pretty frayed. So you may just have an old cord. So inside of this cord cap, anywhere along the cord, all the way up into where it connects to the machine, and even inside the machine, it could be shorting out, either hot to neutral, hot to ground, or hot to the case somewhere in there. You know, the casing of inside, maybe against the inside metal components of the motor, it could be touching anywhere there. So you may have to, you know, simply possibly replace the cord or have an appliance man take a look at it. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the third scenario. And one of the most common nowadays is plugging into a circuit that has an arc fault breaker. What arc fault breakers do is they monitor the sine wave. All right, so here's a standard sine wave. And if we um, have a arcing situation, let's say there's a loose connection, it's going to modify this sine wave. And this computer chip in here, or for the lack of a better term, is monitoring this sine wave. And if anything gets out of this normal 60 hertz sine wave, it for you know long enough or whatever it senses is danger it's going to shut the circuit off so potentially our motor let's look here at uh you know a possible motor you know sine wave here if it gets out of whack the circuit thinks that it's arcing the circuit breaker thinks that it's arcing and it's going to shut off the circuit the three ways that it could be is that it's overloaded okay you just got a simple overload your components are getting old and they're wearing down or your you know, uh, breaker is thinking that it's an arc because of the sine wave of the motor. Sometimes it's just as it starts, sometimes after it's been running for a few minutes. But I hope this video helped you a little bit today. Let's get to it.